Hey guys, this is a quick little comparison video that I wanted to go through with the Convoy S8. This is a bunch of S8 hosts that uh, I received from Convoy. They were kind enough to send me some of these free samples for the purposes of this review. And you can see here, some of these are not actually offered just yet. And I'm hoping to get some feedback from you guys to see whether you might be interested in them. But over the left here, you wouldn't have seen this one. This is the W5050 SQ3s. It's a round die LED in there. You know, you've got the SFT40, which is already an option. But these two, as you can see, die surface is pretty similar. But, uh, you know, with the SQ3, the 5050 SQ3, it doesn't produce as much output as the SFT40. Here you've got the CSL NM1, okay, it's one millimeter by one millimeter die surface, it's the smallest LED of the lot, the lowest output, but it's also one of the furthest throwing, okay, probably the second, the, this is the NM1 version, the Osram W1, it's the second highest throwing flashlight out of all of these S8 hosts, okay, but what takes the cake is this PM1 emitter here. Now these both are PM1, um, Osram PM1 or W Osram W2 emitters. Okay, so the die surface is about twice the size of the NM1. Okay, maybe slightly, slightly smaller than that, but it is producing a lot more output. And this is the green version here, and you wouldn't believe this thing throws well over 500 meters, whereas the NM NM1 throws over 400 meters, but the green version, I mean, that super, super impressive. And if you want to get the version that just has the most amount of throw, you know, this is the white version. It doesn't throw as far as the green version, but it still throws 419 meters compared to 428 meters for the NM1. So for me, I mean, I'll just get the PM1 because it throws pretty much the same distance as the NM1, but produces twice as twice as much light, unless you really like that pencil thin, thin kind of spotting beam of the NM1. Here's a quick little close up of the S8. Okay. And you can see you've got that crenulated bezel deep reflector, okay, got these cooling fins, to be honest, they're more stylistic, right? affect the, the performance, the cooling ability of the S8 compared to the S6, not that I've noticed anyway, you've got this included clip, this steel clip, decent rigidity as well, it's not just going to get pulled out you see in some of these other budget flashlights, you put them in your pocket and you pull them out too quick or in a funny angle and the clip just detaches itself. You're not going to get it with the S8. I really like the knurling as well, the anodizing. It's uh, still grippy. It's got a matte black anodizing, but this checkered knurling is really nice and grippy. Tail switch here on the end. Okay. And yeah. The UI is pretty much, you've got 12 mode grouping, so switch it on with the tail switch like that. And full press, half press to switch modes. Okay, there's a whole bunch of different grouping options that you can choose, and there's modes. Uh, I tend to use the ones that go from 0 0.1, 1%, 3%, 10%, and, uh, well, 10%, 35%, and 100%. So, so there's a bunch of mode groupings that you get with this light. And I tend to select the one that's just 0.1%, 1%, 10, 35, and 100%. Give you a wide range of modes that you can use. There's also a mode that just stays in 100%. And that's great if you want a makeshift tactical flashlight or the closest thing to that. Because that ensures every time you turn on that flashlight, you're going to get 100%. Output. So here are some runtime tests with all the S8 models with the different LEDs. So you can pause the video and have a look. Essentially, they're all very similar. They start stepping down quite quickly. Okay, some of them you get about 30, 30 uh, seconds of full output before it steps down. 
um, you know, strangely enough, the W5050 SQ3 model seemed to have a little bit more sustained output on 100% in the beginning. So you don't really see that 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 big step down until about to about uh, one minute through the test. Also ran a bunch of ceiling mount tests on 35%. And you can see here pretty much all of them hold the output from 95 to 100, which is very promising. Here are a bunch of tests that I ran on my Opel Light Master Pro. You can pause the video to take a look. And you can see the winner by far is the CSL PM1 F1 emitter. You've then got the NM1 TG emitter followed uh, by the, the uh, PM1 white version. So all of them throw really far, but of course that green emitter can't beat that. That really, really takes the, the win here. So some considerations to keep in mind when you're getting the S8. There's no onboard charging. You're going to need an external charger or a battery that has a USB-C charging port on it. It's a small host, so all of them with all these different emitters in there get pretty hot on 100%. And I don't mind that myself because I just end up switching into a lower mode. But if you're worried about that, you can program it to remove the 100% mode. But yeah, that's just something to certainly keep in mind with these smaller hosts, and especially because Convoy do push their lights quite heavily as well in terms of the performance side of things. They're still safe to use. But uh, there's a certain point where you're really just not going to be able to hold them. I mean, I had to hold these, uh, hold it right at the end, at the end of the testing, um, because it was just the body of the flashlight was just too hot. Um, I also wish that there was a momentary mode, which means the installation of some forward switch in there. And if that's something you'd like to see, just let me know as well, and I can pass that feedback on to Simon. Overall, I, I really think Convoy's nailed it with the S8 and. You know, if you are looking for a more tactical styled version of the S6, uh, I'm not sure if I'll go as far to call it a a full tactical flashlight, but I'd say it's like a budget tactical flashlight because it gets certainly just so close to to what to what it needs. It just needs a momentary mode and a few other tweaks on there. I actually carry this one around with me, the S8 with the PM1 F1 emitter, the deep carry. I love it. This is like my new favorite EDC. I'll link where you can find these. And if you have questions as well, just let me know. I'm sure I've missed a few things out. If you enjoy the video, do me a favor and like it. Click the like button. It just helps me to get it out to more people. And if you want to keep up to date with the latest lights, make sure you subscribe. I'm going to compare all my S8 hosts with different emitters and then to show you what they all look like side by side and we'll start with the SFT40 and this one is by far the brightest of the lot uh, so much spill and overall output you can't beat that okay on the right there I've got the PM1 emitter CSL PM1 TG okay which has a very strong hotspot, okay, throws further uh, than the SFT40 as you can see, just trying to get that tree up in the center to show you, okay, a little bit more, okay, SFT40, the PM1, but really there's not a huge difference, I mean, it comes down to whether you want to just add on another 40 something percent output with that SFT40 or a little bit extra throw with the PM1 and I used to say the PM1 in the white edition but really I think I'd go with the SFT40 because the differences in throw are just so I mean it's it's noticeable but it's really minuscule if you think about it another 50 meters maybe Okay, PM1, SFT40, PM1. Okay, let's bring out a couple of others and we'll see how they kind of fare as well. And uh, coming up next, let's have a look at the NM1 TG, CSL NM1 TG. Okay, this one 
has the most throw. Okay, out of th out of three we've tested so far, significant. Okay, and uh, it's very similar to the beam produced by the S6 as well. Okay. Might compare that one also with the PM1. So this is the CSL PM1, CSL NM1 to the right. Okay, PM1, NM1, PM1, NM1. And look, I mean, the NM1 does throw further. It does, it does throw further, but you're also looking at significantly less spill, okay? I tend to go for the PM1. If I'm choosing one or the other, I'd go for the PM1 as a more versatile beam. But I mean, if you're looking for just this pencil thin, thin LEP-like beam, the NM1 is outstanding, okay? In the white anyway. Now, here's something interesting. I've also got one with this round die emitter, 50-50 emitter in there, and we're gonna compare that with the SFT40 and the PM1. So this here is that round die emitter, okay? And we've got the SFT40 in the center, and we've got the PM1 to the right. So, if we just compare, let's have a look, just compare that that round diameter there with the SFT40. Jeez, it's, it's really it's really hard to tell, but I I think that round die emitter, that 5050 SQ3, it's uh it's out yeah it is out throwing the SFT40 by a little. It's hard to see here in camera, but I can see just judging with my eyes it is a little bit throws a little bit further but honestly not a huge difference I think once the lights once both of these lights start stepping down you're gonna see you're definitely gonna see a lot more difference okay I'm just waiting for it to step down and you can already see that round diameter is throwing a bit further already okay that SFT40, okay, 50-50, SFT40, 50-50, okay, so even if we compare the hot spots, you can see that hot spot of the W5050 SQ3 to the left is brighter than that SFT40, okay, because you've just got more lumens that are concentrated in the center of the beam, uh, as a nature of just the, 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 the shape of the die, circle and just smaller as well, as smaller than the SFT40, okay? So you can see, in terms of spill, in terms of spill right now, they're both producing very similar amounts of spill, but in the, in the beginning, the SFT40 was producing more light, okay? They're both pretty hot now. And, there we have the, on the right here, uh, just in front, we've got the CSL PM1. CSL PM1 TG. Just wanna let the other one cool down a little bit, that 50-50 emitter. Just cool down a little bit and then we'll turn it on now. Okay, that 50-50 emitter and the PM1. They are, they are almost identical, I really, and struggling to tell any difference there. Uh, only thing is that, let me have a look. Yeah, I, I would say the 5050 is producing a little bit more light at the moment, tiny bit more light if you compare the, the spill here on the ground. Okay, both incredibly hot to hold at the moment. Um, but as you can see, like even if we look up into the distance, even if we compare them side by side there, up in that little clearing, that 50-50 here on the left 
hot spot is a little brighter. It's very, very hard to tell, but it, it is slightly brighter. Okay. Now, time to pull out the big guns. Now, this thing is incredible. Now, so far, I would say the 50 50 yielding 50. Uh, Alright, so now to pull out the secret one, the one that I really like. It's the S8, but it comes with the CSL PM1 F1. Green. Look at that. Okay. And as you remember, the 5050 SQ, okay, pretty much through the furthest with, with similar sort of spill, okay, and brightness as the PM1. So let's have a look. Let's compare. That 50 50. Okay, look, there's just no, there's just no competition. That PM1 F1 is so bright. Uh, visibility wise, look at that, you can see all the way into those trees, detail those trees, whereas with, the, with this uh, 50 50 SQ, you can see the front of the trees, but at the back, it's a little bit more tricky to see what's going on. Okay, of course, you're gonna have to deal with this green beam this uh, is going to irritate some people but there's there's no doubt that visibility wise it is just outperforming all the others by a mile I think what will be interesting is we compare it with the NM1 okay so I've got the NM1 here and um, we're gonna compare it let's see how this goes NM1 and you know the the green emitter has hasn't had too much of a rest so let's see how it goes look at that again there's no competition okay greater candela and spill even as you turn on the nm1 straight away Now what will be interesting I think would be a green NM1. That green NM1, <laughs> I think that would throw. That would really be interesting. Really impressive if I could get one of those. But look at that. So if you can hack the green beam, which is which is I don't mind it. If it's just a visibility and use at night, it's not a big deal for me. The candela of this thing is so impressive, I'm willing to forgo the fact that it's this, this green tint. Okay. And I hear green is a little bit easier as well on animals. You can scare them off. 